Um, so basically, this is how her overjet was uh, look like. So at the end of the treatment, you can see the, the seven months treatment. You can see that gap, big gap here would close already. And that big overjet or overbite was increased already or it improved already without any jaw surgery. This is her after 11 months at a 70 years old, like 69 when she started, 70 when she was finished the treatment. One year treatment at this age was impossible to be achieved because everybody else told her extraction for other teeth, surgery, blah, blah, blah. And this is when she graduated. Now, what other uses or potential uses of ultrasound for the lower jaw? So I discovered that this ultrasound can make the lower jaw bigger in rabbits by just applying ultrasound to one side of the jaw. You can see that side become taller and bigger compared to the control. And that has been published in one of the most prestigious journals in orthodontics. Um, and also in order to uh, uh, prove that, we had to go to higher animals. So while I was working in Saudi Arabia, I did study in monkeys, baboons, and then we showed that ultrasound, when we apply to one side only, it can make the jaw grow more than the other side. And then when you added another appliance, like white jumping appliance, it, it helped move the jaw forward. So we did this in a, a pilot study for people that they have the jaw, underdeveloped jaw on one side. And then when we give them that this appliance here called hybrid appliance, in addition to the ultrasound, it helped improve their jaw from here to here, from here to here. So we published this paper as well. It's free online. If you Google my name, you probably find it. So what tissue engineering lower jaw? Lower jaw, can we tissue engineer the lower jaw? Why tissue engineering lower jaw is needed? Because lots of people can lose the TMJ or the jaw joint because of osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, trauma, like big, big, punches to the face or the jaw, all of those things can make the bottom jaw uh, backward. When it's backward, it can affect breathing, snoring, sleep apnea. And total uh, uh, joint replacement is not fun. It uh, has lots of problems and it's not guaranteed that it can fix the problem. So people now try to use the stem cells to make a new joint uh, so we can get some uh, uh, stem cells from the bone of the longer bone, like the tibia or the uh, leg, and then put it in petri dishes and make some cartilage like uh, tissue, bone like tissue, put them together and make another joint and instead of getting artificial joint for the same individual. For tissue engineering, you need a bunch of things. So it's like hamburger. So for a hamburger uh, a sandwich, you need the buns, you need the burger, and then you need the stuffing. So uh, you need the cells. That's the basically the burger that you need. You need scaffold. That's the the uh, the bun, and then the environment that's stuffing or that like the sauce or something that you need to add. And this sauce is important to uh, stimulate the cells, the mesenchymal cells. Um, or the bone marrow stem cells into bone-like uh, and cartilage-like uh, tissues. And then those bone-like tissue and cartilage-like tissues, when you put them together, you can make a whole joint. So we have everything uh, that we can. So we try to do that. So we get those stem cells in rabbits. We isolate them from the leg of the rabbits. We made uh, with ultrasound, we applied ultrasound, and then we found that ultrasound can actually become more bone-like cells uh, in the petri dishes. And uh, with ultrasound, you can increase the number of cells as well. Um, that's already been published. So with ultrasound, you can make more colonies of those stem cells, and we can make them bone-like uh, tissues. And then we looked at different gene expressions, and then we found out Ultrasound can make those cells become uh, bone forming cells by differentiating osteopontin and collagen type 2 uh, genes inside these cells. And then 
we get this further and then we start to make bone like tissue out of those stem cells and cartilage like cells uh, tissue out of the cells as well so we have cartilage and we have bone we put them together and then uh, for the rabbits we cut one side of the joint we removed it and we put in inside to replace it this tissue engineered uh, scaffold that has the bone like tissue and the cartilage like tissue together and we put it like around we wrapped it around in a scaffold like the bun of the hamburger and we put it inside with some bone uh, cement and then after uh, four weeks we had groups that received ultrasound groups that didn't receive ultrasound group that received only the scaffold without cells uh, uh, like the bone and the cartilage and uh, we found out actually with ultrasound uh, the the tissue that's been formed very very close to the normal joint so the normal condyle or part of the lower jaw inside the joint is very normal very very normal you get the cartilage parts you get the bone parts so you are ready to go but we didn't take this unfortunately part of the heart animal due to lack, lack of funds and this never uh, been applied to human but in the future this ultrasound may be helping something like this in the future so this already published uh, in a tissue engineering journal that ultrasound can basically makes the tissue engineered condyle look normal compared to uh, when it's the tissue engineered condyle only without ultrasound or when you get empty scaffold with ultrasound they didn't get in much healing compared to empty scaffold with no ultrasound so you get control group for each one um, what ultrasound can do so ultrasound can enhance the proliferation or the increase the number of cells, uh, osteoprogenitor cells like stem cells. Uh, ultrasound can activate the differentiation of the stem cells into bone-like and cartilage-like and cementum-like and dentin-like cells. So you can make a whole tooth if you can. The potential is there, but we're not there yet. Uh, it can make angiogenesis, means like more blood vessels and more circulation that helps regeneration of lost tissue as well as making new tissues by tissue engineering it can stimulate the new blood vessels as i already mentioned all those are different authors that i've never met in my life it increases growth factors so with this all of those stimulations especially tgf beta 1 uh, it has a huge impact in dental field in the future. Potentially, if a tooth has been broken, can this be welded together or hold, like repaired together? I have only one case and that has been shown that. So one case that was in the, one of the clinical trial, and then I've been treating her, sent her to get her wisdom teeth removed, and then she came with a fracture of the lower canine. So I gave her the ultrasound, but she was lazy recently. She didn't use the ultrasound. While she was using ultrasound, the teeth fractured two parts of the roots get soldered together, like welded or soldered together or healed up together. So you can see that, but it's only one case that uh, you cannot make a statement out of one case, especially if she's not compliant using the ultrasound. And the distraction, yes, potentially it's already in uh, in the uh, distraction. Maybe we can in the future can do distraction dentogenesis. If that part of the tooth is gone, can we cut the remaining part of the root and distract it and make that root and the bone longer? Maybe. Lots of projects. We have to do it in animals first to ensure that this is doable. But unfortunately, it cannot be do be done at University of Alberta. It's just uh, uh, too tough to deal with the Animal Ethics Committee. Um, can we tissue engineer teeth, maybe, in the future? Can we actually replace missing teeth? Can we make this happen, the media release? Can we regrow new teeth, maybe? The potential is there, but unfortunately, it's very hard, and it's very heartbreaking to do similar 
experiments at University of Alberta, especially on the animal level at this time. Future, maybe we can get this uh, device that you saw that can fit into the mouth, into the sides. This is the future. Hope to get that uh, whole device into a nail size instead of this big size of the ultrasound, initial ultrasound exogen. Now to the size, hopefully. The future, hopefully, will be bright for the generations to come to take advantage of these discoveries and maybe discover more that this technology can help lots of people around the world with an inexpensive device that can increase the secretion of growth factors, um, uh, stimulate dental tissue formation, stimulate bone formation. So, uh, in addition to all of those advantages, ultrasound also has an anti-inflammatory effect. That's why when people get muscle spasm, tendons, sore joints, when they use the ultrasound, the ultrasound eases this part because of its anti-inflammatory effect. Uh, in the future, we'll be launching this advanced aligner training and consulting for orthodontists and uh, orthodontic residents to help them uh, do the cases that I showed you this evening with a strong confidence without hesitation and they can serve thousands of patients uh, uh, without the need to go for traditional jaw surgery. With this, uh, I hope I entertained you tonight. Uh, I know this workshop should be extended up till eight o'clock. So I didn't try to make it more boring by showing you different graphs. Uh, like lab graphs or uh, papers out of my 100 plus uh, papers. But I want to make it more interactive, hopefully, more questions. I uh, reserved almost an hour for questions. I was hoping to get more attendee uh, uh, today. And uh, if there is any question, I'll be more than happy to entertain at this time. If not, at this time, my email address is on the screen. Anybody can be uh, 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 easy, easy uh, email me or communicate with me on social media. And I'll be more than happy to respond whenever I have time. Thank you very much for having me. And I hope I entertain you. And I'm willing now to take any questions. Well, I think we'll give questions a second to come in. And then if there aren't any, I guess we'll wrap it up there then. Okay, I don't see anything. So I think we'll call it here. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, for coming in to speak. Your your presentation was super detailed, super interesting. And yeah, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks again, Sunny. And uh, thanks for the organization for inviting me. And I look forward to more fruitful collaborations in the future. Thank you. You are very